I'm warmed up for Sally Under Night. Join me in cheering on the Golden State Warriors. I'm a third generation New York police officer. My father and grandfather were police officers, and as long as I can remember, I've wanted to follow in their footsteps. I started my law enforcement career with the New York City Police Department in 2006. I worked for the NYPD for several years and had a great experience, but I wanted more. The department had over 35,000 officers, and I didn't want to just be another number. I wanted my service to have a direct impact in the community. My career journey brought me west and ultimately to the San Leandro Police Department. At SLPD, I'm not just another number. The work I do has a direct effect on the community and the people I serve. At SLPD, I've had the opportunity to work patrol, evidence collection, SWAT, investigations, peer support, employee wellness, professional standards, and I've promoted into a leadership position where I can influence positive changes in my department and community. If you want a challenging and rewarding career in law enforcement, join us at the San Leandro Police Department. Visit wherearblue.org to get started. Are you tired of shoveling snow? will come to beautiful San Leandro, California. Hi, I'm Abdul Pridgen with the San Leandro Police Department, and I welcome you and encourage you to go to wherearblue.org to learn more about this amazing city and the wonderful job opportunities we have for you. Thank you. And then I need to reclaim host, correct? Maybe. Good morning and good afternoon, depending on where you're at. Uh, this is Paul Safner, a City of San Leandro Public Information Officer. Thank you for joining us for using digital advertising to recruit law enforcement officers. And around the table here, I have three fantastic individuals. We have Lieutenant Steve with the PD. He's our patrol watch commander and also our social media coordinator. And then we have Michaela to my right, who's our city news broadcaster. And then Serena, founder, and president, I would say, of Fresh Eyes Development. So in our agenda, as we go to the next slide, uh, these are some of the things that we're gonna hit on, uh, background about digital uh, success, research steps. Um, if you are interested in a free Canva Pro account for government, just simply Google Canva nonprofit account and yes, governments are not nonprofits, but since governments promote public health, you are eligible for a, a Canva nonprofit account. And it's one account with, I believe, unlimited users. So right now with the city of San Leandro, we have one account that I control 86 users. Um, most of them are city of San Leandro. And then we contract with our amazing friends with the Alameda County Fire Department. So we have about 10 folks there. Also, today we wanted to talk about digital advertising on any budget, uh, workflow from start to finish, and then just having available police staff to commit to digital campaign. Not everyone wants to be in front of the camera and promote 
uh, something or uh, a passion. So you got to find the right people and then optimize in-person recruitment events with digital advertising. I know Serena's going to mention that and then follow through on viable prospects, kind of the pipeline and then digital advertising, continuing to education. So as we move on to our next slide, this is just a snapshot of what we as the city have promoted on the digital side. And it has re very, very much value uh, within the community. We have Michaela here. Uh, two years ago, I interviewed her for an intern position and I knew she was the one for, uh, for, for us to be our city news broadcaster and just uh, an amazing talent here. We have nearly, nearly 4,500 subscribers on YouTube and yeah. Michaela gets recognized around the community in San Leandro as well as the East Bay. Uh, also, our city manager is really focused on community building and on the lower, lower left-hand corner, you have a, an announcement for free community headshot portraits. Um, Alfredo and Alex, my staff, they took photos of community members and uh, just overwhelming response with the community there. And the news came out and actually two separate times promoted it. So it's just small things that really touch the community. Um, so with digital advertising, as we move on, it starts with $300. I start with $300 back in February of 2022, not knowing what I was doing other than let's record a video, put it on uh, digital, uh, put it on Google ads and see the effect. Well, long story short, because of starting with $300 and then moving on, of course, we've spent more money than that. We are up to, for police officers, applicants, 115% increase. So from 2022 20 to 2023, 115% increase. Right now, we're up 10% in, in sworn staff from 12 months ago. So with digital advertising and all the amazing work that the police officers do on a daily basis with in-person events, it's all coming together. It's a, a confluence of great positive uh, community impact. And as we go on, I don't wanna underestimate print news outlets. Um, they they remain, remain vital. Here in San Leandro, we use the San Leandro Times to get our word out. So we will put in an ad in the Times, but we will also promote that ad on social media and digital advertising. So we'll pay for that. There's no single tool that is effective everything is effective. I, I feel like digital, um, in-person, print, and then you're engaging residents. You're letting residents know the, the, the priority of the city. The priority of the city right now is police officer recruitment. And the uh, consist consistency is required. We can't just start a campaign for two weeks and think that we're gonna fully staff the police department. It's ongoing and resources are limited. Yes, I started off with 300, but I was able to prove that digital advertising does work and Serena came in to save uh, save a lot of my headaches to get into the weeds of digital advertising. Um, our next slide, it's just a couple, couple videos here, uh, snapshot. We had Lieutenant Steve when he was a Sergeant, just doing a, a ride along video, you know, day in the life of, and then we had other content. Uh, we have a diverse police department, men, women, all different nationalities. Uh, San Leandro is diverse in, in people, restaurants, and diverse in thought. So with that being said, I wanted to pass it on to Michaela to give some of her response and from the heart know what um, she, I guess, got herself into. So Michaela. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Michaela Carter. I'm the public information assistant and city news broadcaster here at the city of San Leandro. And like Paul said, I actually um, started as an intern about two and a half years ago. And since then I've worked really close with the police department and other departments around the city. So today I'm gonna talk a little bit about my personal experience broadcasting city news and in promoting SLPD's hiring initiatives as well as some of the research and preparation that goes into the content and then touch on the workflow process a little bit. 
So my experiencing or my experience broadcasting city news really starts with Paul realizing that communicating through video captures people's attention and even more so that people are drawn to people and people listen to people. So when I'm first getting into my professional career and I'm getting advice on, you know, how to carry myself and act, I remember my mom, who's Gen X, expressing her frustration for Gen Z and how we never want to pick up the phone and communicate and the lack of face-to-face -face interactions. And she just drilled into my head, you know, trying to call someone instead of sending a text message. And the reason being because when you can hear someone's tone, your message is far less likely to get lost. And so I think of digital advertising and specifically video as a way of picking up the phone and calling someone. It's a really great way to nurture your team's brand. And I say all this to transition to the research and preparation element of developing content and how to create content that will resonate with the community. So I want everyone to imagine for a second that your public servant hat is off and just be a member of the community. What type of relationship do you want from your local law enforcement? What do you wish you knew more about? And what would really make you go, wow, like I want to do that, or I think my daughter would love to do that, or I've never seen a police department do that, and I think that's really cool. Now, put the public servant hat back on and ask yourself, what, what story do you tell people whenever they ask you why you want to do your job? And what stories did you hear that made you want to join? I think those are the types of questions to ask yourself and your team when developing content, and that's how you humanize the content so that you can tell your story. Um, Whenever I first started here at the city, I did, I'll be honest, I did have a little bit of mistrust of law enforcement in general. But I think after my exposure to what the San Leandro Police Department does and how much they care about giving the highest quality of service and how much they value and respect their staff, I've now actually recommended several of my friends and family members to apply to SLPD, and they actually have submitted applications. And I want to emphasize that I didn't just have them or recommend them to apply to just any police department. It was just San Leandro, and that's because of the openness and the difference in communication that they have with the community. And I feel like in a diverse city like San Leandro, that my initial perspective of policing is probably felt by many members of the community, but that perception can be changed. So whenever we're thinking about our audience, I think a lot of us can admit that social media can be scary and daunting. A lot of see comments that aren't always positive, and especially as a public agency or law enforcement agency, I think you get, we all know that you get even more scrutiny. So I think there is a particular audience though that I think is a little bit or misunderstood and I call them the information gatherers. They are the people that are in comments, they're in the emails, they're on the phone, they're in person at the workshops and they're always asking questions, sometimes not in the most kind way. But, but I believe that these people can actually be your secret biggest supporters. And the, informa the information gatherers are often the trusted advisors with the most influence in their circles. These people value transparency and honesty and facts. And they're usually constantly sharing to their friends, family, and peers about what's going on. And their opinion matters because they're known to have all the, all the facts. So I think catering content to them is super important. And at San Leandro, we said, hey, let's take all these people that have all these questions and give them an opportunity to have them answered. And so the SLPD Q&A forum was made and the response from the community was super favorable because one, um, we allow community members and potential recruits to hear directly from current officers and leaders, which I think builds authenticity and trust. Um, we're also promoting open dialogue and showing that the showing the community that we want to listen and also have an opportunity to simplify kind of complex information. And you can also reach a really broad audience. Um, so now we've talked a little bit about how video is important, the type of content to produce. Now the execution, how do you get from brainstorming and story discussion to distribution on your channels? And like Paul mentioned, every city um, has a different budget and different priorities. So it's 
practically impossible to exactly duplicate any other city's outreach or recruiting efforts, but it really can be as simple as, um, you know, doing a selfie video, you know, it starts there. Um, there are a few things that you will need though. And I think that one of them is the officers or staff, someone who does want to be in camera or is open to it. Um, in San Leandro, that was Lieutenant Steve and me, it kind of started there. Um, a camera or a camera phone, some language to invite the community to join the conversation and a social media platform to share it. Um, beyond there, everything else is really just refinement, enhancing and building on that foundation. So from there, I'll pass it to Lieutenant Steve. Well, good morning, everybody. I wanna thank um, our attendees for being here and um, wanna thank Paul for setting this up and putting it together. Uh, this is this is something new that I don't, we haven't done this before. Um, and as far as I know, these webinars specific to public safety and social media, um, you know, it's something new, something that I think we should engage in more often because it's a good learning, good learning tool for us. So what I'm going to talk about today, um, I'm going to talk a lot about sort of the utility of social media as it relates to a marketing mechanism and a tool that we've used, not just for recruitment, but for engagement. <clears throat> and excuse me, I have a bit of a scratchy throat this morning. Any, everything we talk about today, I want to relate back to the utility of social media. So let's go through some things that I think are important, and then we're going to get into some very specific uh, questions that um, we're going to discuss today. So we talk about the value or the utility of social media. I think the first thing that comes to mind for me is its reach. Um, if you talk about like a marketing infrastructure that already exists, and it's really easy to sort of jump on that train and get involved, we're talking about social media platforms. And I think recently law enforcement has done a really good job, not just law enforcement, but any, any first responder organization. Um, we've done a good job recently of being more engaged and utilizing it. Uh, in the past, it was one of those things that we kind of shied away from. Maybe it was because we didn't understand it. Um, I'm sure there's a myriad of reasons, but the reach of social media as it um, as it relates to recruitment of new staff and community engagement is limitless. One of the things that we think about um, in law enforcement and any government organization is the cost. It's a relatively low cost, if not free, uh, marketing tool. So just consider, you know, how many of us how many of us have cell phones, right? How many of us have ever left our house without our cell phone in the past? 10 years. If we had a show of hands, I would get venture to say it'd be zero. So we have a tool at our disposal pretty much all day, every day, with which we can make content and then market um, to a specific need. And whether that's recruitment or engagement, um, that's one of the things that I think really benefits government organizations. And then as far as um, as far as platforms, there are the main ones that we use, there's some some smaller ones as well. But if we're talking about Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, next door is a big one we use at a, at a community level. Uh, but again, we're going to move on here shortly, but the utility of social media is limitless. There are so many avenues and mechanisms out there with which you can share your message. You can recruit, you can market, uh, you can engage with your community. Um, so again, it's, it's a, a very useful tool that we have to embrace. And if you're not, we're going to, we'll talk about it later, but if you're, if you're unsure about embracing social media, you're making a critical error. We'll talk about that. So just some of my personal experience uh, working at the police department and in, in the city here, uh, Michaela kind of touched on it. Um, she and I have been doing a Q&A series, which is basically, it's a, it's a YouTube video where we solicit questions from the community. <clears throat> if you have specific concerns, if you are looking for specific educational points, let us know. We're going to talk about it. We're going to answer you on, um, on short form video content. Via, uh, via YouTube. Some of the other things that we've uh, participated in are some recruitment videos um, specific to the department's push towards um, hiring more officers and uh, professional staff and dispatchers. We've kind of dipped our toes in the water of podcasting. Um, we've kind of, we're looking into that. We're going to see where that takes us. Uh, but I think primarily the recruitment videos and the social media content have been where we're putting most of our energy. So what does that look like? What's the community feedback on our social media content? Well, it's been overwhelmingly positive. I'm sorry, overwhelmingly positive. Um, we have, I know 
it's been talked about, uh, but I think it, it bears repeating that we have personalities um, and individuals that are being like Michaela, she's recognized at city events. And you talk about um, instant, instant integrity as an organization. Someone can go up to Michaela at an event, myself, Paul, ask a question, get an answer, engage with us. I think there's a lot of value in that. And a lot of like selfies with residents. Yeah, a lot of selfies. <laughs> uh, that, I was trying to pry the residents off during the last Cherry Festival. That's, that's something that takes some getting used to is someone yeah. asking you for a selfie. Mm -hmm. But there's value in that. That mm -hmm. shows that we're bridging that gap. Yeah. If, if, if there is a gap, mm -hmm. um, I think we do a good job in this community and this organization of, of doing that anyway. But if there's any gap that exists, um, this is one mechanism by which we can kind of overcome that. Mm -hmm. um, everyone has a story to tell. And when it comes to city organizations, when it comes to law enforcement, fire, first responders, our community, they want to know what our stories are. And maybe in the past, we haven't done a very good job of of expressing what our stories are, not just in, as individuals, but as organizations. Um, this is, again, a mechanism by which we can engage with our community and say, hey, look, this is where we're going as an organization. These are some of the successes we've had along the way. And again, we've had a lot of positive feedback on uh, the content we're pushing out. It's also, it's an excellent community engagement tool. Uh, we've talked about uh, a marketing tool. We've talked about the utility of, uh, of reach and um, the low financial impact it has on a city. It's paying dividends in engaging with our community. We can look at PD sponsored events, um, broadcasting those over social media to get more attendance. Uh, it can be a community education tool and significant events and arrests that our department uh, have, have achieved in recent history. So it's just a way to update the community and keep them engaged. Available staff. One of the things that Paul touched on is not everybody's not everyone's going to want to be in front of a camera. Not everybody's going to want to uh, be on camera talking. However, there are people that are going to want to, and they have significant stories, and they should they should be shared. They should be told. One of the things that, um, as Paul mentioned, and I kind of I kind of glazed over, I oversee our social media program. It's myself. Um, and then sworn and non-sworn staff at our department. One of the things that we push and we really try to instill in our, our social media team is they are the content creators. We don't have to spend a lot of money um, on influencers or um, not that we would, but our staff is our content creators. And if you are out there listening today and you're part of a government organization or a first responder organization, police department, fire department, I'm just gonna tell you, use your line staff. Anybody, uh, I turned 43 this year, anybody who's like 30 and under, uh, they know how to use social media, trust me. And um, they're proficient at it and they will be excellent content creators. Rely on your line staff. Again, going back to the phone, uh, we all have that tool on us all the time for content creation. And your line staff, your younger line staff is very good at it. Um, so just wanna put that out there. So, Lastly, what advice do I have for people that are out there, um, people that are in attendance today, and just overall first responding organizations in general? When it comes to all things we've talked about today, um, not just a marketing tool for recruitment, but an engagement tool as well. Some of the things, some of the pitfalls um, that I've been guilty of and I've learned because I've engaged with my line staff, my younger line staff, with Michaela, with Serena, with Paul, is short form video content goes a long way. If you want to increase engagement with your community, get away from a single static image and really focus on short form video. It could be a couple different clips put to some trending audio or just some sound, some music. And I think you're going to see an exponential increase in your engagement, which will, again, that's going to increase recruitment. It's going to increase engagement overall. It's going to increase community education. <coughs> so really try to try to focus on uh, long form or short form video content. And Steve, also, we forget once we have that followership, 6,000, 10,000 followers on, on Facebook with the PED, and there's an emergency, you already have a captive audience to then share that emergency broadcast, that yeah. communication. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a great point. Um, we've, had, we've had people that have applied to work in our agency that have told us specifically they did so because of our content. So, excuse me. <laughs> 
Um, and then lastly, if you have concerns about using social media, I totally get it. Uh, we can talk more about that. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh, but my challenge to you is to embrace it, look at the value in it, and uh, and use it. Use it. You're going to see good results. Great. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> and now we have Serena, who's going to give us a little boot camp and a few minutes on using digital advertising. Yeah, and there's a lot of content to cover here. So I'm going to do my best to explain this um, in a succinct way. Um, but I'm going to leave my contact information at the end of this presentation as well. So if you want to reach out for more questions, we'll also have a Q&A session. But if you have more in-depth questions or more personalized to uh, something you might be experiencing in the space, just reach out to me and I'd be happy to go more in-depth into any of these topics. Um, my name is Serena, and I'm the founder of Fresh Eyes Development. Um, I started my company over 10 years ago, uh, focusing on doing digital marketing for small businesses and local politicians. And um, through those connections, I started working with local governments, uh, county, city, and state, as well as law enforcement agencies. And now my business is almost exclusively working with uh, government agencies. So um, I love what I do. And it's a space that's constantly changing and it's something that you have to stay on your toes for. Um, and so it's something that it is time consuming. And so my main focus here today and what I'm going to be reviewing with you guys is the difference between, you know, being able to have a third party handle most of this for you versus you being able to do it in house with either somewhat of an ad budget or with no ad budget at all. So I'm going to first review for you guys kind of the secret sauce, which is SEO. Um, SEO means search engine optimization. And what that mainly focuses on is when somebody's typing in keywords um, into Google or Yahoo or Bing, um, different search results are coming up on, you know, on that browser. And so how Google or whatever browser you're using determines what placement, you know, different websites get on the search results is all based in SEO. Um, there's a lot of components to SEO, but Three things we're going to focus on here is one, indexing, which means when Google or the like uh, scans your site and it pulls the keywords and phrasing and content that it sees on there. Um, so that's what it's going to use to determine how to uh, rank your content on the search results. So if somebody is searching for something like um, highest paying um, careers for veterans, um, you know, fresh out of the military, something along those lines we need to incorporate some of those keywords onto our website or onto our job descriptions so that those are ranking in the search results. So when an individual like that is typing a question, we're ranking and showing up. Um, so keywords are focusing on those phrasing or phrases that people might be typing into the search bar itself. So we have to think in terms of what they might be searching rather than thinking in terms of, um, just marketing the best, you know, like saying um, big bonus, uh, you know, law enforcement positions open, um, things like that. That's not necessarily what someone's going to be typing into a Google search. Um, so that might not be the most effective tool for you. So when we're looking at keywords, we're really putting ourselves in the seat of the person who is actively looking for that job, and regardless of what niche um, they might be in, whether you're looking for dispatch or whether you're looking for sheriff deputy or a police officer um, or even a lateral officer. We have to think in each case in terms of what that individual might be searching on Google. Um, and then to add to that, there's also backlinks. So backlinks, I'm going to be pretty brief. We can get really deep into this and there's loads of YouTube videos out there that you can um, watch to learn more. But backlinks are essentially when another website um, or resource online links to your job posting, your recruitment website, something like that. So whenever you get one of those backlinks, it basically tells Google, hey, this site is trustworthy. Another website is recommending this to an audience, um, as well as this is probably useful information or useful content because it's being recommended by a third party. So the more backlinks you're getting, the higher your website's going to rank for keywords as well. Um, the reason I start with all of this is because our social media efforts, our blog posts, our recruitment website design, all of that, all is creating a funnel to bring in leads, right? And those leads we're hooking with our recruitment site and trying to get the uh, recruitment officers to wow them and really, you know, 
kind of handhold them through their experience through the academy and the whole application process so that they stay with the organization, right? But in order to get people into that funnel, um, our social media posts, for example, those are indexable, like I you know, said with SEO um, on Google. So when we're posting on social media, we can be using keyword phrases and those posts are gonna actually show up in the Google search results. Um, one of the main ones that San Leandro utilizes for this is gonna be YouTube. Um, so if we create YouTube titles and descriptions that are going to include some of those keyword phrases, that's going to help rank on Google faster than a typical recruitment website or a county or city's actual official website, just because they're not necessarily, um, they haven't been around as long as they don't have as much content as a website like YouTube does. So YouTube already ranks really strongly in SEO. And just to jump in here. You're, you're talking about words, creating keywords and all that. That probably takes hours or do you have another little trick? I'm going to do a little plug here for chat GPT. Um, you need, of course, to use your common sense here. And like I said, you need to be thinking as the individual that you're trying to target and what they might be searching. But that being said, you can type into chat GPT and just say, hey, um, I want to target um people with active lifestyles in the city of San Leandro to um to um our recruitment website please give me some keyword phrases or search phrases they might use um when looking for a job potentially in law enforcement or looking for a job in local government and ChatGPT will help you out with that of course you know take it with a grain of salt you got to read through the results and make sure that they make sense Oftentimes, I'll take the first, I'll ask it to generate 100 ideas for me. And through those 100 ideas, I'll break them down from there further and further and be like, oh, I see the direction that, you know, ChatGPT was going with this search result. So this actually gives me an idea for this and this and this. Jobs um, with stable healthcare or jobs that have a long-term um, or fast-tracked uh, promotion um, plan, things of that nature, right? Um, jobs that have you know daycare opportunities things like that right all of a sudden you're starting to look at those keywords because when you think about it every single law enforcement agency in the country is hiring right now there's not a single one that's like we have enough officers so because of that using general terms like law enforcement jobs to rank for on google is going to be really hard because you're competing with the whole country who's looking for officers so instead, if you start going for those niche specific keywords where you're targeting individuals who might not be the general target audience for, you know, your average law enforcement agency or an agency that's just targeting those general keywords, you're going to have a lot more success. Um, for example, you know, I mentioned the veterans example. Uh, so, you know, highest paying career uh, opportunities for uh, veterans. Well, if you create a blog post on your recruitment website with content like that, where you have this blog post that's focusing on keywords geared towards veterans who are looking for high paying, stable careers with benefits, you can get all of those keyword phrases into that blog post. And it's not about having blog post content regularly posted on your website. It's about getting your website indexed by Google or a web browser with those keywords. So really what we're doing is we're just trying to show up for more niche places in the search results. Um, so I wanted to kind of go into that a little bit further here. Let me just check on our time. Okay, I'm going to have to yeah, just keep going. Keep, <laughs> yeah. speed it up a little bit. This is good content. Um, okay, so if if we could go to the next slide, or do you want me to share my screen? We, we, you guys got it? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so over here, I wanted to just show you guys under... Um, the one just previous to that, sorry. So on the right-hand side here on the screen, you guys can see um, a search result on Google, right? And this top one says sponsored. I just put in a very general term here, vet jobs. That could be veteran jobs. That could be veterinarian jobs, right? Um, so up here, this sponsored result, it's gonna get first placement on Google search results. Um, this typically is the first two spots on any Google search are going to be reserved for sponsored results. Now, the rest of them are whatever site ranks highest in SEO for whatever keywords you typed into that search bar. So 
What that means is that, yeah, we can do a lot of work and put in a lot of time into our recruitment website and making a lot of blog posts and creating a lot of content with backlinks to our recruitment website, all with the same keywords to start ranking for something like vet jobs. But we could also, for a you know, fairly small budget, we can start running Google ads to be able to show up for this placement through you know, just being able to pay for that spot rather than putting in that work to build the backlinks and build out your keywords. I recommend doing a combination of both, of course, but just depending on what your time and your resources are like for your own individual department, um, you'll know what's going to be you know, the best result for you. If you have an immediate need to, um, to hire in a position, let's say school resource officers or something of that nature, and it's immediate, you're better off starting off with some Google ads to get that top placement because it's going to take a while to build SEO. SEO is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Um, so when it comes to something like Google ads, I'm just going to touch on this briefly. Google ads has an option where you can sign up for your account and it's going to give you a more basic uh, version of Google ads. And then there's the more in-depth version of Google ads. And I've been working with the city of San Leandro on running some of their ads for both um, their police department, as well as for some local events they've had and local initiatives, getting information out for, you know, regarding a council vote that might be coming up. And there's, it's a big wide world. There's a lot going on in Google ads and it's a bit complicated. Um, a training can't just be done in one day on Google ads. And so one of the things that I would recommend is taking your time, investing in taking the courses, if you're gonna do it in-house, or looking to invest with somebody who can either provide trainings to your staff or who can be managing or overseeing your Google Ads as a whole. When I first got started in Google Ads, it was very easy to make mistakes. And even to this day, it's very easy to make mistakes um, and they can be costly. So it's one of those things you do wanna, you wanna be careful with, but it's something that is worth investing in training within uh, your own team or with um, uh, having a third party help you just manage that aspect of it. Um, okay, so now when we're talking about SEO, I now want to jump to the next section, which is about social media. Um, and with social media, you know, we have our typical posts, right? And those are things that I, like I said before, are indexable by Google, um, which means keywords, links, all of that are going to be read by Google and come up in the search results. Um, there are three things that you need to be doing on your social media to get organic reach, and that's working with the algorithm, right? One thing I do want to say, though, is, is as of 2024, Meta, which is Instagram and Facebook, is actively um, actively kind of hiding content from government accounts, as well as accounts that they deem to be regarding social issues. Unfortunately, law enforcement content often hits on one or both of those targets, meaning that it is not getting the same push and placement that it used to get even just a year ago. Um, it's becoming a lot more pay to play now, right? Where an ad campaign, you're going to be able to reach a larger audience through Meta. Uh, otherwise, your content is really only going to be seen by your current followers. So there's some tricks around this, though. And these three tips are like the free version. But again, these are time consuming and they take a lot of resources from staff. So one being posting regularly, making sure that you're posting content that's engaging, um, that's video, photo, you know, video content's always going to be king. But easy to digest, short content is going to be really helpful for you when it comes to the algorithm. The second is working with any new features that Meta might be putting out. Um, if Instagram has a new real filter or has a new conversation tool or something like that, if you use that when it's still new, you're essentially advertising that new feature for Instagram or Facebook. Um, so they're going to actively push your content further so that more users start trying to use that new feature that they've created. Um, and then third and most important, but also most time consuming is gonna be engagement. And I'm not just talking about parting a comment that somebody might make on your post. Um, what this involves is following accounts that are similar to your own, um, following accounts that are engaging with your content and then engaging with those people's content. So let's say you follow a fellow um, law enforcement agency in your area. Well. Don't just follow them and don't just like a couple of their photos, but comment and engage. If you see them having coffee with the cops, comment something like, where was our invite? 
you know, and give us a call next time, right? Something like that where you're you're causing conversation and engaging further in the platform. What Instagram and Facebook both want is for their users to stay on their social media platforms for as long as possible. So causing conversations or doing things that are diving in further than just doing a follow or a like of something is going to cause Instagram and Facebook to be like, oh, they're helping get people to stay on and have more conversation within these posts, uh, which means they're spending less time clicking away to third party websites or clicking on ads that are, you know, taking them away from the platform. So at the end of the day, like if you want to grow your following in 2024 as a government or a law enforcement agency um, with this kind of, you know, diminishing reach of content that's happening organically, you have to be doing this engagement. You have to be, you know, posting regularly and you have to be working with the algorithm. All of that aside, and just like how I was talking about with SEO, um, when it comes to your recruitment website, you can go around this by paying, right? So you can pay to play here, where if you don't have time to be spending four hours a day doing engagement on your account to expand your reach, you can utilize ads. Now you may have to get approved to run social issue ads, even though law enforcement recruitment ads aren't a social issue. Um, it does still get deemed that way. The verification process is, is actually really easy to do. Don't get intimidated by it. Um, and for pretty small budgets, you can you know start testing the waters and testing what works and what doesn't. You can run campaigns to drive people to your recruitment website, or you can drive or do campaigns to increase your followers and have your content get more reach. Um, so this is just going to be, you know, your way around putting in that full-time kind of social media management uh, resource kind of, instead of utilizing that, you're utilizing a small budget. Um, the number one thing I would say when it comes to anything regarding paid advertisement, whether it's Google, Meta, Spotify, is to start slow test out a bunch of things. I like to call it the shotgun approach, where what we're doing is at first, we're trying a bunch of different things. We're trying a video, a graphic, a really, you know, a longer maybe text copy of an ad. We're testing these out with different targetings and we're letting them run really slow, maybe a dollar, maybe $5 a day. And after a month of getting that information back and seeing what's working and what's not, then you can go the sniper approach, where then you're taking a majority of your budget, budget you're putting it on the campaign that is producing results, whether that's leads to your website, messages on your account, followers, whatever it may be. Um, and then you're really focusing your budget and your efforts on that, you know, particular targeting or ad copy. Um, so take your time. It, you know, the, the worst thing you can do for yourself is to just launch a simple ad, not give yourself multiple different variations on it, and putting all of your budget in it immediately. Ads need time to optimize and you need time to understand your target market. Okay, I know that's a lot. I know we're kind of going over here. Can I just last thing here? I just wanna to go to the very last um, slide. Um, and I just wanna talk about ads that convert. So um, if you could just go to the next one really quick for me, please. Thank you. So I wanna give an example here. Um, this is Orange County Sheriff's Office in Florida. They're one of my clients. And ads they used to run look like the ones um, here on the right. And so we have a lot of text here. We have contact information on the page. We don't have, you know, very, it's not, it doesn't hook you. And if we're spending marketing dollars or we're spending all of this staff time to get this um, reach on our content, we want to make sure the content actually hooks them once they do see it. So something over like on the left-hand side where we have really strong font and text, uh, we're keeping our brand colors consistent and it stands out. And the image we have is an action shot or something fun. We have a smile. We have something that looks a little bit like movement. Um, that is going to yield way better results than trying to put every single bit of information you can into your ad copy. That's the ad copy is meant to bring them to your recruitment website, which is going to contain all of that information. It's not meant to give them all the information in one single snapshot. So just remember your ad copy is meant to be the hook. The more eye-catching, the cooler it can be, the better it's going to be for your campaign in the long term. And marketing research shows what seven times, 10 times someone sees an ad and then they act on it, Serena? Exactly. So you're wanting to get multiple impressions. You're building trust. And also like people are online doing things. They they could be on YouTube, you know, watching videos because they're in the middle of, 
exams in college or something. And so they might not be focusing or have the time to go to your recruitment website right after they see the first ad. It's going to be that second, third, fourth, you know, for each person, it's different. But I like to call it the Coca-Cola strategy here, where we're using lots of different graphic and video ads. We're keeping our uh, colors, our fonts, our branding consistent so that it becomes recognizable, right? Like you don't see Coca-Cola ever having a blue uh, logo or changing their font, right? It's always the classic. And because of that, people recognize it just from the colors alone or just from the font alone. And so you're trying to build that trust and recognition within your own branding, just on a little bit of a smaller scale with a lot smaller of a budget, right? And these graphics, Serena, we can probably develop them in Canva and there's a brand hub. Can you just quickly talk about that? Yeah, How absolutely. powerful Canva is? So Canva is an awesome tool. Um, if you're not a graphic designer and if you guys are trying to do this in-house um, and you know, you're know you working with a smaller budget, as Paul mentioned at the start of this um, presentation, you can get a free Canva account, Canva Pro account as a government agency. So because of that, it's something that you should be utilizing and getting comfortable with. There are a ton of YouTube videos out there of how to utilize the different features but it will you will learn this faster and pick it up faster than you would ever have a chance to with Adobe Photoshop or with InDesign or with Adobe Illustrator. So, and you can yield really great results. Um, one thing I recommend is playing with some of the templates. You can change out the images, you can change out the fonts and the colors to make it to your own brand, but you can utilize some of the work that, you know, you know really, really smart designers have already created for you as templates. Uh, you can simply search, you know, in the top Instagram posts or job opening, and it'll give you different templates that you can already start off with. I highly recommend investing some time into that. Um, and just to bring it back to ChatGPT really quick is, you know, when you're asking it about keywords, ask it. I'm, you know, now targeting veterans and we have this bonus going right now or lateral officers and we have this bonus for lateral officers. Help me create some headlines or hooks. Well, a new badge, broader horizons, right? Like that's something that instead of saying lateral officers apply here, we're, you know, instead we're reaching out, we're trying to be a little bit more creative. We're trying to kind of hook them a little bit more and we're playing now more into marketing without the degree or all of that experience. Um, so if you don't have the resources um, or the budget to bring on a third party who can help you do this or at least get started and get trained in how to do this properly, utilize these tools that are available to you um, to, you know, help you kind of guide you along the way. And like I said, uh, to start with, like start low and slow. You don't have to burn your whole budget in the first month, you know, just test things out and see what works. But you do need to be making the effort there because this works. Um, a huge majority of my clients now, you know, we've really scaled back our ad budgets because we're filling up as far as um, all of the, the staff overtime has come to an end things of that nature and things are working. So I highly recommend that, you know, more people get out there and try to do strategic targeting and don't just go for the general easy stuff, but instead, you know, think what does my city or county have to offer that's special? And let me use that as my hook to grab people and think about targets that, you know, the average Joe might not be thinking about hitting. True crime fans on podcasts, for example, right? Like that's a whole, that's a niche that you can be targeting uh, through audio ads. So there's a lot more I could say on this, but I know we're running out of time here. So I will just actually, mm -hmm. can you just speak real quickly, video ads that convert? These are some of the examples. Absolutely. So I was going to talk about in the section here, just about creating exciting um, content. And you really want to hook people within the first few seconds of a video. I'm going to show some examples here. Um, we can yeah. go ahead and start the first one. Um, and this one is from the city of San Leandro. Let's just make sure audio comes through here. But when it comes to these videos, the number I, one thing I'll note while they're sorting audio is just shorter video content works great. People's attention span isn't what it used to be. Um, and repurpose this content. If you're making a, oh, sorry. If, if you're making, um, you know, a long form video, crop it and turn it into a reel for social media as well. If you're spending that effort and that time, you should be repurposing your content across every platform you can. And that's another opportunity for a backlink. Each channel that you post it on 
and you link to your website, that's a new backlink, which is going to further raise you in the search results. Okay, okay. we're going to get this video started. <coughs> So oh. <laughs> I urge you guys to go on to uh, YouTube and check out San Leandro's um, official city YouTube account where we have a lot of SLPD uh, focused videos. Um, there's a bunch of shorter form ones as well as some longer form content. Um, and our focus here is we are building trust. We're creating um, relationships. We're establishing another platform for communication um, and then we're selling San Leandro, the lifestyle of San Leandro, the heroics of the job. All of those different elements, I think, um, come, you know, into play when we're creating our ad campaigns. We don't want to just um, sell it on being the most exciting career ever. We want to talk about how it's it's a career choice. It's not just a job and that San Leandro is going to be the best place for you to uh, to grow that career. And you can do this, you know, with any city and with any county. You just have to think about what the selling points are for you. Um, this last slide here just has some of my contact details. If you want to take a screenshot of that or save it, um, I um, I'm happy, more than happy to give some advice if you guys have more questions. Um, it also sounds like we may be doing an in-person um, training, uh, maybe across two days, where we'll be doing a boot camp with creating ads getting started posting those campaigns. Um, Paul will be able to tell you more about that. But um, so stay tuned for that information as well. I think that that'll be really helpful and we can actually have you guys leave the boot camp having launched some ads for your organizations. Yeah, and with that, we're trying to finalize details. So if you are CP'd for the Zoom webinar, we have your email. If you didn't and you're just kind of bootlegging on a coworker's uh, computer, feel free to... Uh, reach out to us uh, or reach out to Serena with the email shown on the screen, and then we can get you on the list and let you know. Um, but the boot camp in person would be highly valuable. We're not here to make any money, um, but just in a way um, help other local governments share in the competition to grab applicants. Closing words, Lieutenant Steve, on what we've heard. I just want to put it out to the group. Uh, really try to embrace the power of social media and what it can do for your organization. Um, I know we talked a lot about recruitment, um, overall marketing. Uh, we've seen a lot of success in our organization using it as an engagement tool, uh, which in turn, we've seen our recruitment numbers go up. So um, if you're not using it, if you have questions about how to use it appropriately, this is an excellent panel of experts. Um, but again, my challenge to anybody out there that's here today uh, again, thank you for attending, but please embrace it and use it to its fullest extent and you'll see you'll see a lot of value in it. And with that metric, Steve, I was talking to HR, human resources, probably maybe two years ago, and they said that they couldn't get a lateral police officer here. And now it's off the hook with the number of applicants from neighboring cities. I like the competition. Mm -hmm. uh, with that being said, we have a question, Serena. What tools do you use to measure your KPIs? And let us know what KPI is. How hard was it to convince your stakeholders to reinvest in your digital program? And I can probably take that once yeah, you start. As well. So uh, first and foremost, it's depending on what platforms you utilize. Um, for clients of mine, we have um, integrations in. So we're hooking up the APIs of um, the back end of most of the ad platforms that we use, as well as um, you know, we're measuring our blogs and uh, the websites and Google Analytics. 
Um, and all that information is being fed in. And once a month, we do an in-depth review with our clients of what their clicks, their, um, their conversions are looking like. So one of the biggest things when it comes to our law enforcement clients, though, when we're doing recruitment marketing, is we have custom lead forms on the websites so that people can speak to a recruiter if they're not quite ready to apply now. Because most of you, um, I'm sure, are the same in using a platform like Government Jobs to actually process your applications. But you can't track nearly as much on a, a platform like Government Jobs as you can on your own um, you know, WordPress-based or JotForm-based um, forms. So you're able to actually track the engagement, time spent, questions that people are most likely to respond to or that they're getting stumped on or something and, you know, closing out of the form. So for us, one of the biggest things is looking at the end of the month. OK, what was our spend? What, what did our, you know, our impressions versus our conversions look like? But then how many of those conversions actually turned into not just website visitors or things of that nature, new followers, but actually people who are. Um, using the contact or recruiter form, or they are applying directly to the government jobs platform. So we're really looking at those two numbers um, the most when it comes to determining um, how we're adjusting our ad campaigns or our efforts. Um, and then really quickly here. And just on the screen, we pulled up where our blue, this is our official recruitment website, and this is what you're talking about. Exactly. And so if we click out of this pop-up here, we have this contact recruitment button up in the upper right-hand corner, as well as the apply now button. So what we have found is that utilizing this form here, that's both optimized mobile as well as desktop, you know, a majority of our users we find are, are on their phones. Um, but having a, a questionnaire on here, a form that people can then use to contact our recruitment team, it's a lot less scary of a step than going through and starting the application process on the government jobs website. So you need to have at least two options for individuals when you're you know, creating this funnel and bringing them to this site. Um, and then yes, Cheryl, this is the San Leandro PD's current recruitment website. We're managing it for them, um, but it's all their content um, and it's how we're taking in the leads for San Leandro in particular. Um, going back to the leads too, just real quickly, uh, Cheryl, so John Doe, Jane Doe, Doe fills out this form. It actually then funnels into a Google Drive or Google Doc that Serena can share with Steve, Michaela, myself, HR, and then HR within 48 hours of receiving that lead will follow up. And then one of Steve's recruitment officers will follow up after that. So super user-friendly with the integration with Google. Um, and it's just a fantastic workflow. Yeah, absolutely. And being able to see it live, they get an email notification as well as anytime somebody fills out this form. So it gives us the opportunity to jump on, um, you know, really hooking these um, potential leads with our department versus another department, because they could be on Google looking at 12 different departments, right? And it's whoever calls them and starts that personal touch, that's really going to have the best chance at carrying out the relationship long term. Um, and then Michael here is asking about a little bit more of talking about recruitment campaigns for other part of cities, um, outreach, things of that nature. So Paul, do you want to start that? Yeah, off? I'll just be brief. I know we're over time, but this is fantastic. We can talk for hours or actually Serena can talk for hours, <laughs> uh, but it's, but she's been fantastic. She's just been so super, uh, she's been a, a blessing here in San Leandro. So that being said, we actually started with advertising public events. I remember the first time I had my iPhone and I recorded uh, Michaela advertising the Cherry Festival. This was in 2022 on outside City Hall. And I think we we had like 20,000 or 30,000 views at first. Um, and I'm like, oh, this is cool. Um, but then Serena taking it up a notch with recruitment. However, we have not stopped advertising uh, public events announcements and actually i'm at the point yes i'm bragging but i'm at the point where each city department is on board with digital advertising we have library we have public works um, we have all these other departments recreation parks that want to get their word the word out about their program their service and we're recording the video or we're creating a, a canva graphic and we're promoting that yes it's great on social media to post but that might last 24 hours 48 hours but seeing Michaela, seeing Fran Robostelli, seeing Steve on YouTube every night 
And that's what I'm hearing from San Leandro residents. They're seeing our content every night when they're on YouTube. And uh, it's it's been it's been fabulous. I I just want to share the the good work here in San Leandro because you can replicate it with the fire department, with another city, with a special district. This isn't rocket science. You just got to be persistent. You got to have good talent. You just have to have people that are willing to make mistakes. I've made a lot of mistakes, um, but learn from it. Going, How was going that? back to the where our blue.org website. So every piece of content that we put out on our social media platforms, somewhere on there, you're going to see, join our team, www.wearourblue.org on everything we put out. So that's one way we drive traffic to our recruitment website is just we post it and then we have somewhere on there that website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then that's a backlink, right? Which is helping your website, your recruitment website overall gain more trust and a higher SEO score on Google so that you're reaching folks organically through Google search as well. Yes. Yes. All right. It's about time. If there's other questions, feel free to email us. Uh, email Serena. It's been a pleasure. Any last words, Michaela? Thanks for having me. And I appreciate, you know, being able to talk about this. It's awesome. Great. Great. Thank you. Follow us, YouTube, mm -hmm. Facebook, X. We're on next door too. Uh, but thank you so much for taking the hour out of your time and listening to us. Take care. Bye. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>